This is Yertle, a hawksbill turtle. Little does she know that her journey for the next two years will be helping turtles like her. This small device, a satellite tag attached to the top of her shell, will be transmitting important information about her movements, which will be tracked online and used to strengthen conservation efforts of this endangered species. What we are doing right now, um, tagging these nesting female to study their migration pattern and also so that we have better information to provide for the coming generation. If there is area that people are hunting sea turtle and you know do a lot of poaching, fishers will have a better idea because then these turtle that tag, if they go missing like that, that will give us information. If our turtle end up in maybe a different country like Honduras, Guatemala and so, we know exactly how far they go. The steps to get to this valuable information is a rather simple and painless process which takes about two and a half hours. One person holds Yertle in place and this small tracking device is attached to the top of her shell with this bottom marine based epoxy. Once it dries for an hour, another layer of marine epoxy is applied on the first base around the device to hold it in place. That dries for another hour. And once that is done, one last step is taken to ensure that Yertle can be identified as her movements are tracked by this 5,000 US dollar device. Leading today's mission is Dr. Todd Rimkus, a professor at the University of Miramount in the USA. When we get uh, the data from the turtles, it is showing us where the turtles are nesting. It's showing us where the turtles are resting and foraging and feeding. And so it gives uh, fisheries great information to make management decisions and help protect our waters. And that process is gonna hold that tag on for several years. Uh, the tag will transmit for two years, giving us uh, this nesting and foraging and resting and uh, the data that we need to pass on to fisheries. Um, there is a, uh, a pit tag so that we can identify her and that will go into uh, the skin uh, right in the scruff of her neck and so that's like getting a shot at the doctor for your immunization so that won't hurt her much either. Maybe a, a tiny little poke but uh, other than that we're not out here to hurt any sea turtles. Yertle is about 75 years old and can live for about 75 more years. She weighs over 100 pounds and is in good health but her kind, the hawksbill species, are critically endangered, and so they're protected by law. They face a number of threats from poachers to plastic waste to gill nets, and so this program is helping to strengthen the management of these sea turtles. These turtles are here a long time, and we don't want them to go left us, and we know that the population was going down from 1990. We used to have like 130 yard turtle, but sometimes we only have like 30 yard nests, and so, but we are trying to protect the nest and the nesting female and study their behavior. For the Hawksbill population, mm -hmm. I could see it look good because um, a few, I was worried last year we get that hurricane, and we get like six turtle die. Um, one of them which was a green turtle and one was a lagra head. The rest was hawksbill. But um, I was a little bit worried even when I compare the data because these turtles that is nest here are the turtles that nest the year before because they nest every other year. But um, looking at the record is good because for the first time on the beach we ever catch two turtles one night, you know, in capture. Which we know that sharks was on the turtle that sometime in August. Um, August sometimes we have like three or four or five of them used to come up but um, comparing the record now it looked good so I could see that for the hawks bill but the green turtle and the lagra head we are not seeing much of them. But to ensure that we see more of these sea turtles Dr. Rimka started a non-profit hawks bill hope back in 2009 to help with the conservation efforts here in Gales Point Village. It is reported that this largest stretch of beach is where the highest frequency and concentration of Hawksville is found for the entire Caribbean. This is the largest nesting beach for Belize. It's very important and it is a, um, we have a healthy population of Hawksville, which is a critical endangered species here. So for this whole um, beach, is very important for our country. It has attracted students from the Miramount University. For the past few weeks, students have gotten hands-on experience unlike any other. It's been incredible. Um, I think this group is unique because we've been able to see three turtles, which is unusual, um, but really very cool because you get to then be a part of the process and you get more comfortable with it. This is your first time. Do you think you'll ever return and would you recommend this program to other students from your school? 
Absolutely, 100%. I think this is a great way to get a biology class where you really feel like you're being a part of the subject, a part of the material, um, and you get to have that hands-on learning. Our students are getting a chance to put their hands on a turtle and really see science firsthand. And that experience of actually putting your hands on a turtle is gonna live with these kids for the rest of their lives. They'll be telling their grandkids about this. They did well because they called me on the radio and said, Kevin, we have a turtle, you know, and they follow the procedure, so. And it is with excitement that the students and team watched Yertle make her journey from the beach into the Caribbean Sea. They're not sure when they will be seeing her again, but they will monitor her every movement, all thanks to the little device. Since she was released around midday, online tracking shows that Yertle has traveled for some seven kilometers. Reporting for News 5, I'm Andrea Polanco.